Wireless Quizzes for Blackboard. This video is an introductory tutorial to creating questions in Wireless Quizzes, an external LTI tool for Blackboard. You may be familiar with the first steps if you've created questions in Blackboard before. Let's go over those now. After you log in, go to your course, then to Content. In the Build Content menu, choose Wireless Quizzes. Click the New Quiz button. Add a name for the quiz and optionally add a description, then click Save and Display, then Edit Quiz. To add the first question, click the Add link and the Plus a New Question option. Notice the Shuffle checkbox. Select this box if you want the questions to be shuffled so each student sees the questions in a different order from what other students see. The Wireless Quizzes extension adds six additional question types to the standard Blackboard question types. These are similar to the standard Blackboard question types, but with largely extended mathematical capability. We'll describe each question type briefly. Close. Embed multiple questions of different types inside a single question. In an essay question, you'd ask an open question where the student has space to leave a detailed answer. This is the only type you'll grade manually. In a matching question, the students would match a list of items to the correct items from a different list. A multiple choice question is a standard multiple choice question. Short answer. Ask a question with a small blank for an answer which is automatically graded. A true-false question is a standard question with a true or false answer. We'll now give a generic overview of what a wireless question type looks like. We'll use the short answer type since it is one of the most representative. Select that question type, then click Add to begin. All question types have a few fields for data that is relevant to the question type, such as question text, choices in the case of multiple choice, feedback, and so on. In this regard, the interface is identical to Blackboard question types, so we won't focus on that. Let's enter our question. In our question, as well as in our answer, we'll be using variables with randomized values so each student sees a different version of the quiz. In order to let wireless quizzes know it's a variable, we need to precede it here with a pound sign. What wireless quizzes adds is a new dialogue for handling mathematical behavior. This new dialog is called Wireless Quizzes Studio. We can always access it by clicking this icon. Once we're in Quizzes Studio, the available options will depend on the type of question we're editing. We're using a short answer type in this example, which has the most features in Quizzes Studio out of all the question types. What we'll find here are settings for controlling various aspects of the question in a way that allows mathematical content to be handled flexibly. The different options are divided into four distinct tabs. As we mentioned before, different question types will vary here. For example, the true-false question has no validation tab since the only possible answers are true and false. Let's go over the tabs one by one. To start with, the correct answer field has an integrated math type editor which allows typeset mathematical formulas to be used as a correct answer. This means students will have the same editing possibilities for their answer as well. Below the editor, we also find additional options for the student's input method. The next tab is called Validation. Wireless Quizzes recognizes mathematical input from the student, and here we control the details of how to assess this input. We can ask for specific units, control which symbols are recognized as constants, as well as a wide range of format options. Below that, there's the Variables tab. Without this tab, Wireless Quizzes is already capable of a lot, but once we start using variables, we will truly expand all that Wireless Quizzes has to offer. In this interface, we can define variables to use in several parts of the question.
The environment is a computer algebra system, which means variables can be numeric as well as symbolic. By using some of our random functions, we can make a variable take on a random value in a range we specify. Then, different students viewing the question would have different questions with different answers. This is a typical scenario for use of variables, but with a bit of creativity, there's a wide variety of possibilities. The last tab is called Preview, and the name is pretty self-explanatory. Here we can quickly simulate the evaluation of a student answer in order to test all of our settings from the previous tabs are working as intended. Once you're done with Quizzes Studio, press the OK button on the left or press Cancel to exit without saving any changes. When you're finished editing the entire question, assign a grade, we'll assign 100%, then scroll down and click Save Changes at the bottom. The question will be added into the question bank. Once you're finished adding questions, click Done, then select Quiz, and now we're ready to preview the quiz. We'll click the quiz title, then click the preview button, and you'll see the questions presented the same as it would be to a student. In this view, we can also edit the question if we want, but we'll finish our preview. We see all as well, so we'll click Finish Review. We've added two more questions that we didn't show on the video, so now our complete quiz has three questions. Let's see how the quiz looks to the student. All the coefficients and constants will be different for each student because we program them to be randomized. We've also ticked the box for shuffled questions, so not only will no two students see the exact same questions, but no two students will see the questions in the same order. Let's finish our quiz. We've specified in one of the questions that we want the students to show their work. They do that on the scratch pad, which they access by clicking the expander button, then the pencil icon. This will be passed along to the instructor as is. Students can go back and retry any question if they want as long as they haven't submitted the quiz yet. Once we do submit it, we can view our grade. We see in this view we got 3 out of 3 for 100%. There's our work we showed. Now back in Faculty View, we can view the gradebook for the class and see the details on any student if we want. We can also update the grading if warranted. This has been a short overview of how to make a question with Wires Quizzes. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tips and tutorials or visit our website at www.wires.com. Follow the link at the top right to learn more about Wires Quizzes for Blackboard.